Is it really possible to look stylish while wearing practical footwear? You bet it is. I'm Sarah Heiner, president of Bottom Line Publications, and this is our Conversations with the Experts, where we get you the answers to your tough questions from our leading experts. Today I'm talking to Dr. Johanna Yoner, who's a leading podiatrist and foot surgeon in private practice in New York City. Welcome, Dr. Yoner. Thank you, Sarah. It's great to be here. Many women like me are kidding ourselves, thinking that it's worth the price we pay in foot pain to wear all those pretty sexy shoes because we're kind of figuring that looks is far more important and having the right look. So are we really kidding ourselves? Long-term wearing of footwear that will deform your foot will create arthritis and permanent pain. Yeah, but the shoes look so pretty. Is there a way to wear them for a little while and then you know balance it out? You can wear them, say you're seated at dinner or at a party. If you're not going to wear them for more than two hours or seated, you can wear them without hurting yourself. That means a high heel or a pointed shoe. Make sure the shoe fits. And what's, what does shoe fits mean? Make sure it's the right size for your foot. Many people have the wrong size in their head and buy the wrong size shoe. So make sure your foot gets sized at the shoe store. Purchase the right size. Purchase your shoe at the end of the day when your foot's at its biggest. Then you can wear your silly shoes to dinner. I've heard actually that women tend to buy shoes that are smaller than they should because they think it looks prettier to have a smaller foot. So do men. Men are the same way. And it's a, a silly, it, it, vanity sizing is a big business, especially in shoes. And over the past 20 years, the average American shoe size has gone from a seven to an eight. So people are getting bigger. So the joke is up. You can't buy smaller shoes and get away with it buy the shoes that fit you. You talked about the fact that people's feet have gotten bigger. Has there been shoe size inflation as well, the same way that clothing is not sized the same as it used to be? There's no standardized sizing, but shoes have absolutely gotten bigger as people have gotten bigger. The average shoe in America has gone up one size, in England, two sizes. So what was the largest size in the store? A nine, 20 years ago, the largest size is now 11. So we have access to larger shoes now but people should not necessarily be doing do-it-yourself shoe fitting, or perhaps they should buy, if they buy online, multiple pairs of shoes at the same time? It's where online shopping has opened up an entire world. If you can get your foot sized, it's a good idea to get your foot sized. You go with the longest toe. You size for the left foot if you don't have much time. Your podiatrist should have a Brannock device. This is a device that sizes your shoes, and a lot of shoe stores can size you. But of course, these days, you're going to get a box of shoes in the mail. So the best is to try a variety of sizes. Do not expect the shoes to break in. You'll be breaking your feet, not your shoes. So if somebody doesn't have a regular podiatrist, can I go to the podiatrist and get just my shoe sized and not have to pay a big insurance payment for a visit? Sure you can if you just give a call and ask them if they have a moment, because usually the staff is well trained to do that. So let's play what I'm finally going to call Doc in my closet. I'm opening my closet and admitting my shoe frailties. But let's go through because I think it's important. Let's talk about the dangers of what people are wearing, and then we'll talk about some of the Dr. Yonder approved shoes. Deal? Deal. Okay. So I did bring a selection of shoes. First one, truth confession, this is actually my teenage daughter's shoe, not mine, but every time she wears this, scares the crap out of me. Presumably nothing to really talk about. Absolutely don't even wear it. If you're sitting down at a party or you can stand for less than two hours, maybe you can wear it, but you're running the risk of getting metatarsalgia, inflammation of your metatarsals. You can fall and break your ankle in those. They're four-inch heels, four-inch difference between the back and the front. That's a six-inch heel. You can do a lot of damage to your foot. Is there a maximum height, that is a maximum differential in terms of how high a shoe should be? The American Podiatric Medical Association agrees that two inches is about as high as you should go to be biomechanically stable in a shoe. All right, so how about then? One of the backups is to wear platforms. So this is a shoe. I love this shoe. It has a platform, but it also still is quite high. That's probably a three-inch heel. Again, three-inch platform difference between the back and the front. There is no stability in the back, so again, you are running the risk of an ankle sprain or worse, an ankle fracture. Does a wedge help better than a heel? Absolutely. The weight is distributed better in a wedge. There's more surface area. So all things being equal, pick a wedge versus a high heel. Absolutely, a wedge or a platform. Okay. 
All right, so let's talk about my classic pump because everybody, every woman has to wear just a basic heel. I like this shoe. My only problem with this is the height of the heel, but this shoe has an adequately high toe box. The heel is a bit too high. It will set your body off and give you a little pain in the forefoot. But I think that's a good shoe, especially if you're not walking around a lot. So you talk about a high toe box. What does that mean? That's the front of the shoe where the toes are right there. It should be at least a half an inch. There should be room for your toes. If there is not, put the shoe down and walk away. So a high toe box means there's room between my toes and the point. Yes. Got it. Yeah, my toe doesn't come all the way. Okay. Now, how about very popular flats? Everybody says, don't wear heels. So basic little flats. I always try to give a break. Actually, I alternate between heels and flats. So how about flats? You'd be better served to alternate between heels and more of a wedge or a platform. Those ballerina flats with no support in them will cause you more problems like arch pain than any other shoe. Really? Really. Can I put an insert in? You can absolutely put an insert. There are so many inserts available. A ballet flat is not supportive and will cause you problems. It will create plantar fasciitis as well as a myriad other problems. But a small insert like a super feet is readily available. can fit right in there and then you can walk comfortably. So should every woman have some kind of an insert, almost a, you know, a wardrobe of inserts that they either move from shoe to shoe or that they have in every, every fixed shoe that they own? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Wait, I have one more question. I'm wearing slingbacks, I almost forgot. So slingbacks, how, what, what about those, good or bad? Slingbacks are kind of in between. They are not supporting the shoe from the back. The shoe, the heel supports the body in the shoe. So without a supportive heel, you're lacking a little bit. So I wouldn't go for long walks, but they're certainly pretty. Well, they're comfortable. Um, all right, so let's talk about the Yoner approved shoe. So what's your rules? for a shoe, just guidelines for what somebody should look for? There are three things in shoes that one should look for. The shoe should have a firm heel counter, it should barely bend here, and it shouldn't twist. So heel counter firm, should barely bend, and shouldn't twist. This is three for three, this is a good shoe. And this is fairly stylish, kind of a nice casual shoe for weekends. It had a little bit of a heel, nice looking shoe. All right, so how about dress shoes? How about, so this was one, we talked about a wedge. This gets the owner approval. It's about a two inch or less heel with adequate room in the forefoot and enough surface area on the bottom that you're not teeter-tottering on either the front of your foot or the back of your foot. So this gets three for three. All right, how about boots? Boots are very, very popular. Boots are very supportive, and a lot of people who have trouble with shoes can wear boots comfortably because of the support. So anybody with a foot that does not fit in a regular shoe like a ballet flat will be supported in a boot. Are boots in general good for people to wear in the winter just in terms of providing more support and ankle stability? Absolutely. When I was recently hiking, I was amazed. One day I wore high boots, and one day I wore low boots. The stability, just even though my, my boots weren't tied real tight, it's amazing how much more support that I have. Boots are much better. The only problem people have with boots is when they get ingrown toenails. They don't like the winter. Other than that, they have far fewer support problems with boots. Great. All right. Talked a lot about women's shoes. Let's talk about men. Because men in general don't have as many problems, but there are a couple things that aren't so good. We talked about driving moccasins. What's the problem with driving moccasins? They're so comfortable. There's no support, so if you're driving, I guess that's just fine, but if you're walking in them, you will create those problems of plantar fasciitis, bunions, you can sprain your foot. There is no support. The shoe twists in the middle. That will, the 26 foot bones need support. If they're not supported, you will sprain your foot. So same deal as women. Yes. Put a insert into the soft shoes and then you can get away with this. Absolutely. All right, so, and on the good list for, for guys, I've got a loafer here. Loafer's good? A loafer's a good shoe as long as the heel counter is firm. Again, the shoe doesn't twist and the shoe doesn't bend in the front. Some men require more stability, like a tie Oxford for stability. But other than that, that has a nice high throat on the shoe. It'll stay on the foot nicely. Is it okay for a man, and women have, we've got such a variety of shoes, but men often don't have so many. Is it okay for them to wear the same shoe day after day? People should change their shoes every day. If you only have two pair of shoes, that's fine. 
one pair should dry and rest and have the shape maintained and then wear the other shoe the next day. If you keep wearing the shoes day after day, the shoe will deform and your foot will deform and pay the price. Same rule of thumb with sneakers, they should have two different pairs of shoes that they alternate? If you're not wearing a sneaker all day, it's not the same. If you're just wearing it for the gym, it should be fine. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Johanna Yoner. The bottom line is, you can wear a stylish shoe that is good for your foot. Rules of thumb, make sure that the heel is two inches or less, have plenty of room in the toe box. You don't want the, the, twist, the twist of the shoe to be too great, and you want to have plenty of support in the heel. In addition, make sure that you get an orthotic or some kind of support that supports your arch. Then even the flattest of shoes will be able to give you support, and you'll be comfortable and stylish. This is Sarah Heiner with Bottom Line Publications.